conference here called New Life Conference. And so yeah. I'm uh, uh, hanging out here and leading some worship. And so I'm not in uh, in Tennessee. Paul is in, uh, in, in Nashville today, and I think he's on the drum session, but he should be calling in any minute. Oh really? So oh, I think awesome. so. Yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll be coming from two different places. Oh, yeah. Hopefully he will be. <laughs> no problem. Well, we can just kind of bring him in if he comes. You know, he can just pipe up and say, "Here I am," and otherwise, yeah, you and I can just start just as we are right now. But uh, well, that's really neat that you're out in Colorado. My, I was just saying that we were we just did. On Sunday, your song, uh, Make A Way, which I must confess, even though I know your album, the recent album is called Make A Way, but somehow it just didn't compute when we were singing the song that you were the writer of it, and we were all watching the YouTube video of Desperation Band where, you know, John yeah. is leading it, and it's super, super powerful song. And yeah. so, so I'm like fresh with you, man. We just had an experience, uh, you know, of this song, and... It was wonderful. It just thousands of people, you know, and hands in the air and really singing That's it out. So, so good. Isn't That's it? Awesome. That's what it's all about, right? So It is. It is. So uh, it really is. I just, I often tell people like I, you know, I don't want to just sell music. I got to be playing it, singing it, you know, yeah. I, I could lead or I could just play in the band or whatever, but just, I want to. I want to be a part of, uh, you know, the whole thing as well. So yeah. I love it when I am, and it just makes me feel more more connected to uh, this music. And so, well, why yeah. don't you, Jason, tell me a little about, like, where you are right now, the, the New Life Conference, what's going on, you know, in your in your real-time world today? What's, what's, yeah, uh, what's so happening there? It's kind of fun. So I, John Egan's been a friend for several years and um yeah and so he had me out to just be a part of this conference this year and i've just they've just finished their opening session and uh and and john egan and Corey asbury led and got to hear the song you just mentioned i got to hear them lead it and it's just really beautiful start to the conference yeah it's gonna be an amazing couple of days um vertical church band will get here this afternoon and um, so just lots of friends and get to hang out and lead lead worship together and so I'm pretty yeah. excited to be here. You know, I was just thinking, Jason, about uh, as I was looking at various songs that you had a hand in writing, and uh, I was just thinking it must be such a such a great season. You know, all the relationships you you have built and songwriters and people that you've been able to come alongside and just help kind of lift up their songs or, you know, I don't know, just the synergy that you you come together and, and you know, with such a wide span of songwriters, it's just a real rich landscape of relationships that you have fostered and out of those relationships, you know, many songs that, like I say, some of us, I bet you so many of us are singing songs and we don't even know but you had a hand in them because you're kind of like this yeah. silent stealth in the background, I, you know. Yeah, I am. So, <laughs> I am. so uh, like you say, I really love that. I love that. I, I I feel really blessed in that this role I I get to play, which is a little more behind the scenes, but but in that mm-hmm. it it I get to um, I get to really sort of um, walk relationally and and as a writer with so many different lanes of uh yeah in the church and worship and so and and it just it's it's wonderful because i just get to learn so much yeah you know? and, yeah uh, and now uh, i had a thought um jason is this is how i'd like to kind of start our our time together here is yeah. if you wouldn't mind i'd like to just talk about some of these relationships and and uh, maybe if I bring up some names and you could just tell me like let's just play this game you know first thing maybe it's a memory or you know a feeling or whatever it is that comes to your mind as I mentioned some of these people because I think in in that people will get a little bit of a taste of the breadth of you know some of these songs and relationships so is that okay yeah kind of yeah from the hip a little bit so yeah so 
So I'd like to start with, uh, you know, the song that I think is probably the most, you know, prominent song that I can think of right now that so many churches are singing is Great Are You, Lord. And we all yeah. know that from uh, All Sons and Daughters. So let's just kind of start with them and just, yes. we'll just take a, we only have time for a couple minutes on each one because otherwise okay, the whole good. webinar will be gone. So just first <laughs> thought that's come into your head about the song and, uh, you know, and that little duo there that, and your, yeah. your relationship with yeah. them. Yeah, so David and Leslie of All Sons and Daughters, we've been friends for a while. And Paul, Paul Mabry, who is, uh, uh, plays music with me, he produces all their stuff. And, um, and it was uh, their second project, and we got together, and David said, I would love to write a song that really just, like, helps our church lean more into worship, like that when we would lead it, that like people, yeah. it, it would cause people to stand up and, yeah. and really press in. And I had heard Louis Giglio talk recently, and he had said that uh, worship, in a sense, is, is giving God his breath back. And yeah. I thought, you know, if we, could, if we could help us all just sort of understand the, that what worship is, you know, and... Um, mm. And that it is that that really we're just we're we're pouring back on the Lord something he that he he put in us and just to to know that the the, the breath in our lungs he, every yeah. one of them is has been like has been like God's gift and I think it just it um, we didn't know you know you never know how well a song might do or if it it'll really accomplish what you you're yeah. hoping it does but we we definitely we went we went for we went for something that would help people understand worship more as they're singing that song and it's really been um it's been amazing yeah. to see that yeah. happen well thank you for that you know again i i think we've probably sung it a number of times even in the last week myself yeah, almost, that's awesome. i'm almost tired of it but not quite <laughs> right and i'm amazed <laughs> right. i'm amazed at how the the three chord progression now what is it like a five six four if you're yeah, musically yeah it you know. is but yeah. you could just go around and around and around that is it that forever. yeah i know i love it because i don't have to think yeah. about it <laughs> no and that's that is the beauty of uh, great songs well continuing yeah, to yeah. move along so hill song is another world that you've been a part and you're good friends yes. with like the reuben morgans and I'm actually super yes. close friends with uh, Steve McPherson, who's not much of a Great. face on the recording yes. side, but he's the head of publishing. And so we talk all the time and uh, get together and have had great times together. So I'm going to see him in a few weeks in Nashville. But anyways, another song almost you know, on par with Great Are You, Lord, is Forever Rain. And uh, mm -hmm. so, But just, you know, you can tell us either about the song or just your sort of connection to the Hillsong world because they're so influential and yet it's great that they're reaching out to guys like you to, um, you know, to sort of support them in their songwriting. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, Ruben, Ruben definitely represents just, uh, he, uh, he feels like a, a brother to me that mm -hmm. I didn't meet until, I didn't meet until late in life. You know, we, we, we are cross paths, um, uh, probably, I guess about six or seven years ago, and we just we just inst just became friends straight away. And uh, every time they'd come through town, we would we would hang out. And so Forever Rain really was born out of like a friendship, and uh, we started doing some writing. And and for, and for me, Forever Rain also really represented like a moment in my life where I I had been asking God for uh, songs for the church. I I'd had um, several years where I'd had the successes with songs that were more radio, you know, CCM radio kind yeah, of songs, yeah. and, and had a lot of a lot of success there. And I really, um, my heart, what my my what my heart, the reward, I I always thought I wanted the the award. If I could have any songwriter award, um, <laughs> I always I always wanted to walk into the back of a church and hear uh, people singing something that god let me be a part of writing yeah and right so i yeah. i i like brought that prayer to the lord for several years and forever rain sort of marks the the song where god god really uncorked 
that yes um, that prayer Beautiful. for me. Yeah. So well, that's it's awesome. significant for me. Okay. Yeah. Great song and a great relationship, and I have high admiration for for Ruben as well. He's such a you know a legend. I would call it in our in our more yes. modern world. Yes. And so I really think so. Definitely. Okay, another um, group. Um, this is something where uh, somehow you come through my Facebook feed every now and then, and I remember a while ago I saw a picture of you with three other guys. It was like Matt Redman and Chris Tomlin, and now I forgot the, yeah. the third guy, but I was like, oh my goodness, what a powerhouse of like what songs are going to come out of the four of them. Right. Right. So, <laughs> So I just like if if I can be envious in a godly way, you know, it would only be that I'd love to be a you know a fly on the wall yeah. in, in that room. Right. So, and I'm sure you must feel humbled sometimes being in the presence oh, of other guys who are just massive, you know, in their yeah. capacity. Absolutely. So um, yeah. So why don't we just talk about like I don't know if you want to call it you know they're sort of the passion group, but they all yeah. have their independent worlds as well. But I know passion band world is is uh, someone you connect with. So I'm thinking Chris Tomlin and the Matt Redman. And who's the third one? I really know his name, but I can't think well, of it. Well, that's a lot with Matt Redman. Yeah, that picture yeah. you're referring to, that had Jonas Myron in it as yes, well. Yes, that's, and, uh, he's like yeah, you a lot, where yeah, his he name is. comes up a lot yes. and uh, as a songwriter. So, so tell me about yeah. that little cluster uh, you know, or maybe what was behind that picture? What what came out of that yeah. time? Well, um, it, it, those guys have been. You, you're right. That sort of those those days are like pinch myself days to make sure I'm totally, totally. awake because <laughs> it blows me away. Yeah. Uh, to get to to get to call guys like that friends and to dig in and write songs together and um, so. I uh I guess I uh Chris of of the of the group Chris is probably the, of the first one that I uh, became friends with it was a, a, a several years back he was working on an album and we wrote we had the opportunity to write a couple songs together for it and then um mm-hmm. and then he invited me down to write for um for a, a, there was a gathering of writers writing for a passion conference and um and so that that really was a like a an amazing. I just couldn't. I was so overwhelmed by that process, getting to gather in a room and 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 with with a bunch of guys like that, and 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 the room being sort of pa- pastored, shepherded by Louis mm-hmm. Giglio, and you have Christian Stanfield there, and Matt Matt Mar is always involved in those, and and to be able to like seek the Lord together and ask him for uh, what he wants what he wants the songs of the church to be the songs that he wants us to write that um and mm-hmm. um so um out of those times over the years those guys have all become just really good friends and um uh, i've had the opportunity to travel to europe a couple of times usually we we'll try to make sure we do it like once a year where uh matt and jonas and i will will maybe connect in europe and um and then when they're in town i just if i hear that anyone's coming through town i just i i try to <laughs> wrangle wrangle them in you know so <laughs> yep yep for sure so, yeah that, that that was a that was a random day where matt redmond was on tour and jonas was with him and they, they had a a day off uh, but they weren't necessarily coming through nashville and he asked me about maybe find helping them find a place to do lead worship that night and so I, I I have some friends that have a church called The Belonging and uh, it just was a perfect fit but I, I'm like I'll, I'll hook you up at The Belonging if, as long as we riot <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah so, well well one song day. I'm thinking and I don't know if this song came out of there but it I think it's a part of this whole cluster and it's really really big has been for a, a long time on Praise Church now is the um, Come Lord Jesus, Even So Come, that yes. you were a part of yes. that song. Um, yes. And I'm sorry, yes. I don't know who the songwriters, all of the cluster of them are, but um, but that's definitely part of that passion world. And yeah. So why don't you just tell me a bit about that song, just just interested anyway. You know, and I know uh, that one what's actually amazing. is on your... 
it's on your Make Away album yes. as well. Yes. So that's yes. good. Yeah. You know what's what's amazing and what's cool just with having people uh, songwriters listening in is you never know um, the story or the journey of a song and when God gives you something. So th- this the story behind this song is pretty amazing. There's a a guy named Jess Cates who um, was a writer in Southern California and uh, was serving at a church and uh, they went through a season as a church where they were doing like a, a Daniel fast, a 40 day fast. And this is, mm-hmm. this is 10 years ago. So 10 years back. And he thought, Oh gosh, you know, so they really pressed into the church and he thought God's really going to give, give songs during this season. And um, 40 days of fasting and praying and no no songs, uh, no songs were happening. And so the the day after they broke the fast, um, God gave. Well, Jess was thinking of their church and he was going to lead. And and he um, what what was sort of the beginning of Come Lord Jesus. Jess got then ten years ago, and he led it in their church, and it just um, really uh, was just like. Oh, created a revival in their in their little church in Southern California, and uh, mm-hmm. they went on for a few months, and then and then sort of the um, this this song kind of just he you know he didn't know what to do with it, and so it just it kind of slipped away. Ten years later, um, I'm I'm with Chris, and um, Chris and I invited Jess to join us. And Chris had never written with Jess before, and Jess, had, Jess was a friend of mine. And Jess said, hey, I've, I've got this, I just had this thought last night, I don't know if it's from the Lord, but the song that I, I had going 10 years ago, I think there's, there's, I don't know, let me play it for you. So he played us what was the, the, the impetus and a, a, a lot of the, like, where come Lord Jesus uh, is now um, from 10 years ago in this church. So, uh, and it just seems so timely, like the, the prayer, we, we aren't, we, we've really lost the language in the church of like looking for the return of the Lord. And right. but when you look in, at the early church, it's, it's all anyone was talking about. And um, it just seemed like it's language that ne- that we need back in the church. We we need yeah. to remind people to to be yeah. looking and waiting on on God's return, and be ready. And um, so I love the language felt like it was needed and missing in the church. But I love I love that God gave a writer something ten years before God planned on actually like using it in in any big you know in any sort of world way you know 10 years before and just staying faithful and uh, trusting that god's people always ask me like how do i get my songs heard and 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 how do how do i if i if we're singing a song in our church that is feeling like it could go beyond our church what do we do how do we get it out there And, and i don't i know that that's god's business there are there are some things that you know you can do to submit songs and get songs heard but when when i see stories like even so come and jess leading uh the first version of that 10 years ago and then feeling like that song would never be heard and then how god uh brought this around it's just really encouraging as a writer Mm -hmm. even still to know when god gives me something that i've um to just trust him with it, you know. Yeah, and, and you have to be faithful, right. right? Just faithful for yes, the long absolutely. haul, right? Because ten years that absolutely. that takes by very slowly. <laughs> so <laughs> very slowly, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So I just, like you I know we we think it's all about these two hour these two hour songwriting sessions that you guys get into, and you right. Come up with, you know, a diamond, but it's not always right. Like that, no, yeah. no. Yeah, no. I know. Well, hey, Jason, this is what I want to do now. There's other guys, like I was going to talk about Paul Balash and Vertical, and but I have yes. so many things I want to talk about. Okay. So, so suffice it to say, you know, you have an incredible breadth of deep relationships and, uh, you know, coming alongside other kind of giants in the land. So that's 
that's a little, you know, perspective, I suppose, for every, anyone kind of listening in. So, so now, like, really what we're wanting to do is talk to uh, aspiring song li- songwriters, because there are many who are listening in. Many will listen to the recording of this in the, in the future. Yeah. And, and people are just, you know, thinking, I don't want to just buy songs on iTunes. I want to write them. Like, kind of like what I was saying to you, I don't want to just sell music. I want to make music. I want right. to be a part of right. this world. I just don't want to be a, a consumer of it. And of course, we want to encourage that, right? I, um, yes. So, so we do that in Praise Charts, and I think we mentioned this last time that we have this thing called Song Quest, which we just actually wrapped up our third volume. And, uh, and what we do is, is we put it out that people can submit songs to praise charts, you know, that they have written and these all have to be sort of independent, not signed songwriters. And usually we'll get about, you know, a hundred or so submissions. And then we'll whittle that down to 25. Just internally, we sort of got to bring it down to 25. We put that online and then we let the people kind of take over and people can download the audio for free and the print for free and they can social share it and so then yeah. that whittles it down to 10. And so we've had 10 on the site for the last about three weeks. And just yesterday, I kind of had to pick the winner. And so I've got all these sort of formulas in my Google Docs of how you know, I can yeah. make it fair. But I want to just show you this list now. It's on the, it's on the yeah, look screen. Because like, yeah. these are the people, uh, Jason, that we're speaking to, people like this that are aspiring songwriters. And here's something kind of cool that I wanted to share is, uh, so yesterday I'm, I'm doing the stats and part of it is I have to kind of add up how many social shares because that's one of the factors. And gotcha. How many downloads. Yeah. And so, yeah. so I'm looking at this SongQuest page and some of these guys are up over a thousand you know, Facebook shares, which is really great for you know, independent right. Right. people. Right. Well, the problem is, what was happening is I would go back to the page and suddenly there would be like 50 more shares. And then I would refresh it again and there's like, so I'm thinking in real time as I'm trying to calculate this, right. people are still getting exposure. Well, this yes. morning I woke up and if you go to the SongQuest page, yeah, I don't know what's been happening between yesterday and this morning, but now guys are above 5,000 Share. No so way. Something is just like, it's crazy, you know? That's amazing. And so I'm just so proud of people for, That's you know, amazing. getting their yeah. songs out. And there's comments and people are saying comments like, man, I've got your song on auto repeat all day. I love it so much. No you know, way. Stuff like that. So yeah. anyway, oh, together amazing. with you, we're kind of like shining the light on them for yeah. a little bit. These are the 10 guys that... Uh, that made it to the to the end, and so so what we're going to do is we're going to chart uh, three of the songs that kind of there's one that was there has to be one winner, but there's two others right, that right. that were sort of standing out. So, anyways, I just wanted to uh, congratulate. Yeah. Uh, oh, now I do I have his name in front of you, but the song is "Have Thine Own Way, uh, Less of Me." It's Less a me. it's a little bit of a make remake of that old hymn and then he's got his own um, uh, kind of take on it. It's super beautiful and just um, wow. there's sort of a picture of the guy. What's, what's yeah. Dave Aubrey? Okay, I'm getting help yeah. here. So congratulations to, uh, to Dave. And I That's do want to say, you know, for the hundred people that submitted songs and then it whittles down, it's, it doesn't mean that necessarily, you know, Dave's song is better than the second one, because I think all 10 of these in particular, they've definitely been standouts, you know, that, uh, that are great. And then, you know, there's, there's a few, but, but uh, Dave's song, and then there was, there's a couple others that were real standouts. Oh, here we've got them kind of added in. The social favorite was Be Lifted Up, but that was yesterday. So, you know, that could have all changed between yesterday and right. today. And then the print favorite, meaning that the, the most downloads on the print was Abandon the Worship. So those three songs we're going to chart out. And they're all available, free download of the print and the audio. We just want to help That's people awesome. 
share yeah. their songs. So, uh, That's awesome. so anyways, I just kind of wanted to share that moment wow. with you. Yeah. And uh, just as a reminder that we're all about, you know, fanning these guys' flame yeah. and encouraging them. So That's so good. So, yeah, so it's good. So maybe kind of with that as a bit of a background, let's just take, well, whatever we have the next uh, half an hour or 35 minutes, and you and I mm-hmm. can just talk to songwriters. And um, I think a beautiful thing about the, the era that we live in right now is that if you write a song, you know, there are many opportunities for you to have your song heard. I mean, anybody could post your song to YouTube, you know, in right. five minutes. So it doesn't mean you're going to get broadcast and, you know, taken on by a major music publishing label and all that. But, right. but you know, if there is something, you know, special about your song, there is an opportunity for it to get heard and, and shared yeah. and, and then, you know, so, so that's kind of a, an encouraging era that we, we live in, but, you know, I don't know, maybe help me out. Like what's a, what are some things that we want to be sharing with uh, what's on your heart to share with songwriters who, who are really aspiring. They feel like they have this gift and this desire and they don't want to, they don't mind, you know, singing, top 10 CCLI and all that kind of stuff, but, but they also want to contribute. So what can yeah. you say to, to encourage these people along? What's the first kind of thoughts that are coming to your head as I'm, so we're standing well, in front of, you know, a couple hundred people listening to us here. Yeah. I mean, I, I, um, one, one of the hurdles for me has been over the years and, and, there was a real transition in my life about uh, six, seven years ago, and uh, mm-hmm. where I was, uh, I, I like a lot of the listeners. I really wanted to contribute to the song of the church, and uh, and I mm-hmm. also wasn't sure how. And um, but the 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 biggest hurdle for me, honestly, wasn't the how do I get my song heard. It was, it was. There are so many good songs out there, and there's so many people writing good songs, and there's so many good songs. Like mm-hmm. no, no one needs mine, and so I, that just sort of like crippled me for a while. And um, I, I really, so I was there was there was a day where I I felt like I was again in that wrestle. Like there's so much good music out there. There's so many songs being sung. Um, no one needs mine. And so I was in that wrestle, and I um, I really uh, sensed that I heard from the Lord. Um, the the response to that was, "You're right. Um, no one needs your song, Jason. Um, mm. But I but I want but I want I want your song." And <laughs> It, okay. That was it. That was the end of the conversation. <laughs> it kind of rattled me, and yeah. I thought, oh, "Okay, um, yeah, no one does need my song, and not even God needs my song, but but God wants our songs." And so, writing from the, so I started just really writing from that place, and um, and I and then I'll tell you, I had a, a few years where. Uh, after after that, where started to have some songs being sung in churches, and 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 a, a lot of that was starting to happen, and and then I I felt like I I I hit that block again, where it was just there's I don't know how to two years ago, like we we just keep writing songs for the church, and I, how how do I write these songs? Because things get clouded sometimes where we're looking at we're looking at charts or we're looking at um, how something's doing in the natural. And, um, and that can be a real hindrance to writing a great worship song sometimes. So we, we're, our, our goals or our ambitions or, or this, our human need to be um, validated in what we're doing. And, um, and then I, and, and in another space, I felt like I, I really sensed from the Lord, like re- Another little conversation was he reminded me of the first song 
first song I ever wrote for my wife, who was my a girlfriend. I was I was uh, I was 17 years old, mm-hmm. and um, I wrote my girlfriend a song who's who's now my wife. We've been married for 18 and a half years, but um, I I wrote this song, and I wasn't very good, and the song wasn't very good, and my ability to record the song wasn't very good. I had a task little cassette four track thing and and it had this like reverb function where I could I could make my voice sound kind of Phil Collins <laughs> so I I played this piano part in and I sang this this song in and soaked it in reverb and, and I worked so hard on it with my little four track task in. And there yeah. was there was no agenda I had there was no agenda for that song other than when I was going to get in the car and a Cully was going to be in the car and I was going to pop the tape in and I was going to play it for her. There was no other agenda. There wasn't there was no other audience I was thinking about. There was no um chart I was thinking about. There was no mailbox money I was thinking about. There was no um validation from anybody else that I was thinking about. I wanted I wrote this and I worked so hard on it because I wanted I wanted her to um uh, I wanted her to feel loved by the work I put into this and and God really sort of nudged me recently and said you need to keep writing songs to me from that place yeah. that same way where it's really a it, like we work and really work really hard and dig deep and 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 write the very best you can and 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 all for that moment when you get to like sing it to the lord mm-hmm. you know and um so i try to write songs from that place and and i i think that uh i i want to encourage songwriters who are aspiring to have things happen um with their songs those dreams are good um when things work in big ways that's amazing it's incredible and the, those are all good things but they're not they're they're not um they can cloud the 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 song is the most important thing and the best song is always going to come from a real honest place when those things mm-hmm. aren't the agenda the agenda is just just bringing something really that 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 cassette tape with that reverb really way too loud in the car with that person yeah. that you love and you want to communicate, you just want them to hear it. And yeah. so if we can keep that sort of the, the main thing, um, it, the, the rest of it really does songs do elevate and, um, and find their way. And it, it is always amazing every year. It seems like there's always some song that sort of comes out of a, a small environment and then, just goes everywhere and yeah so like the, at, at this moment it would probably be good good father you know just a song right. that has come from a really small um thing that's happening somewhere in atlanta and and now but you know it's just it's been it it didn't need marketing it didn't need marketing it didn't need a publisher it didn't need you know <laughs> just yeah this, God, God just, I think God was pleased to remind people that he's a good father. And, yeah. um, and so now we're all singing the song, you know. I know. It's, it's amazing. I'm glad you brought up that song. And just to note, like, you weren't a part of that song, were you? Or no, 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 you? no. No. So not. you're just bringing that song out from, yeah. you know, it's from another world. And, uh, you know, yeah. it, House Fires is... Yeah, the, the the name of the group or whatever that that has done it, but yeah, that's interesting because I I know I had personally stumbled on that song just as a worship leader in the last really the last four weeks. The first time I sang it, I was like, man, and I was singing it to uh, <laughs> leading worship at a men's recovery camp. So this is a bunch of men who are you know, recovering from addiction, wow. and, you know, and um, drugs and all this kind of stuff. And they're staying at this camp for like eight months to reorient their lives around yeah. God's purpose for them. So I had like just 20 men, me and a guitar and a jambe and, a, yeah. you know, on a keyboard or something. But we sort of got onto that song and I was like, oh my goodness, this, 
the father is like there's nothing else to sing about right now. It's, you know, yeah, it's just it's amazing. such a great message. Yeah. And then, and then, and I didn't even have the song on praise charts at the time. Like we were just we hadn't even hardly heard of it, and so suddenly we stick it into praise charts, and boom, the next morning it's like number two. You know, and I'm yeah. like, what? <laughs> Where did this come from? And uh, and now it's like if people would yeah. look online because our our top songs they refresh every day, but that yeah. song has just kind of got this special thing. And maybe you know we could just talk about that because that that happens to songs where they some songs just have this anointing for a season. Yeah, Holy Spirit is a, is another song that yeah. just kind of has come up through. And, you know, and the funny thing is, it's not even the people that wrote the song. I mean, the, the Hesslers, John and Hessler wrote the song, but um, um, it's uh, Battistelli's version that yeah. really given the song legs. Something she did just breathed life into it. And uh, but it's kind of funny because in our top ten, you know, Holy Spirit will have like the three spots. You know, it's number one, number three, and number nine. <laughs> all these different people it's, uh, you know again songs songs like that and so yeah tell me a little about how you how you see you know those songs you've been a part of some songs like great are you lord is certainly maybe it yeah. was even more in that season like a year ago now it's almost you know like everybody has sung it over and over and over yeah. right so right right so um those are just like, I don't know, you can't fabricate that. Maybe it's just a gift or you don't know it. Or do you know it when you write it? I don't know. How do you know? No, like I don't, that? you know, I don't know. You. I will, I have to say, I don't think you know it. Um, yeah. You. I think you, I think you know it when you lead it. I don't think you know it when you write it. And so I, right. I uh, yeah, good. I always encourage people who are writing songs, like find, find a way even if even if maybe uh bringing it out on a sunday morning service isn't like if the opportunity if the opportunity for that doesn't exist then even just amongst friends like sometimes um when we write songs in groups we're just singing it all together so there's not just one person but a group of, even a small group of people singing a song you there's 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 something that becomes apparent about the the strength, the strong parts of a song, the the weaker sections of a song, whether or not a song is working or not working, and whether or not there's that extra thing that we can't really know about how to put into a song, but sometimes God put injects into a song, and um, we those all become really um, we become aware of those when we lead them, and so but yeah, when you write them. You you really don't know. Um, mm -hmm. you, you, it's it's. Um, it, I've always I've always thought you would know. You know, I've always thought you you when you write that song that might be sung by millions of people that you would when you wrote it. But yeah, <laughs> the thing about songwriters, I would say we. In general, we all think every song we write should be sung by millions of people. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you yeah. know, I mean, and and that's what fuels us is because um, we we write we 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 write things that we love, and if we if we didn't, um, we wouldn't be we wouldn't write, and we wouldn't be good at it. And so it's very common to it's very common to love most the most recent thing that you wrote. You know, that's mm -hmm. a, and so. Time can be time can be good. It can be good to walk away for a couple of weeks and come back and listen fresh and go. Do I still do I still love this. And and if you do, then lead it. If it sings well, then and and people really respond to it, then you're, you're probably into a pretty strong song. Yep. Yep. And you know, and probably the reality is most people listening to us. I mean, I don't mean to be a downer on you, but it's not a reality that most people are going to write songs that go world, you know, wide. Most people's right. real world is writing for their church, you know, or their small right. group, and maybe, you know, a, a another ring of influence 
around that. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's, that's the real world of what 98 or 99% of us are in. And, um, and, and it's okay. It's legitimate. It's, it's worthy and it's impacting and it's, you know, very personal and needed. Right. So, um, Absolutely. That's important to say as well. Yeah. Yeah. Abs- absolutely. And like I said before, like if we have we have to. to um, there are some songs of mine that um, are. I would have. They're they're so meaningful to me, and if I had to just sing a song to the Lord, um, there are some that I would pick that no have never found traction and and have never gone anywhere. But even those, those are still a real gift to me sometimes, <laughs> you know, to be able to sing yeah. a song to the Lord that, that, that's for him. So. Yeah, yeah. Hey, can we transition a little bit? So I'm going to try and save uh, maybe 10 minutes at the end for some questions. Yes. I, there's a few questions coming in, and I would try to make a bit of a live element where I'll read your questions. I'll try to get to a number of them. So. Great. While we're going through this next 10 minutes, people listening in, you just type on that ask a question or click that ask a question uh, button up there and that will kind of make it through to Natasha and we'll try and get some of those in. So in the next 10 minutes, let's take a bit of time to talk about One Sonic Society and your, your, your last contribution called Make a Way. So um, just to sort of transition into that, because you're like, there's the songwriter... Jason Ingram, and then you have this thing called One Sonic Society, which is, you know, I, I suppose that's the ministry or the band out of which you, you're actually a, a worship leader or an artist. Yes. And so yes. can you just tell me, just to start, like what is One Sonic Society? That seems like you're picking three words randomly out of the dictionary and sticking them together. <laughs> so I'm just saying, like, <laughs> yeah. what, what does that mean? One Sonic Society. So both Paul Nabry and I are we're producers, writers. We're behind the scenes um, contributors, and so. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to be able to have. Uh, we we still wanted to be able to go and lead worship, on you know at things and to to go teach and and lead and and. And so we needed a we needed a a platform or a name for that that was other, that was different than Jason Ingram. We we really feel like we get to rep we 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 are participating in a, what we get to see, which is really fun, is because uh, I get to work with Bethel and. In, mm-hmm. in California, and then Passion in Atlanta, and then, then Matt out of London, and then Hillsong out of Sydney, and, and Vertical Church out of Chicago, and 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 all mm-hmm. these different lanes. And so th- there's really one. There's a lot more uh, unity and oneness in the in the worship leaders in, on, in the global community than there's ever been. And we we really get to be sort of part of the people that kind of get to connect some of those dots and mm-hmm. and so be a part of this one sound, one song of the church and so the sonic is the sound the society is 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 the church it's it's all of us together but but the the one is just that um we feel like we get to sort of represent because we're sort of a tie between so many different platforms that we get to sort of um make connection about this is all really mm-hmm. one thing that we're doing and so when we uh, record music, we're, we're usually we're coming around songs that have been on different platforms that we've been a part of, and we're going well. We're we, we're going to lead these two, and so we'll put our own little um, our own little twist on them. And um, and so so when we when we go lead them, um, we've got a version that's true to us. And yes. and sometimes it's just nice to give a song like a different uh, a different spin you know yeah and so it, it almost that, seems that, like your album is is full of a bunch of uh cover tunes but the reality is that you actually had a part in writing 
them, uh, yes. you know, them all. So, yes. but that's, you know, but this is your, yeah, your personal take on songs that often have gotten their legs already uh, under another artist. Yes, yes, uh, yes. But it all makes sense now. Now, now I get it. Now, one Sonic Society doesn't seem so, so random. <laughs> but it's uh, yeah, it's a it's a way of locking arms with the yeah. Sonic community of yeah. the church and saying we're all kind of one we're all going to lift one song i got it okay well i'm just actually <laughs> recognizing we've already talked about a couple of these songs but natasha is just on the powerpoint and she can maybe go through the the list and we'll just park on a on a few so great are you lord we talked about that one and you have a, um, a version of that come lord jesus even so come we talked about that song already um, uh-huh. from the passion world, Can't Stop Your Love. Why don't we just park on that for just a moment? Has that been um, recorded somewhere else? I, I don't recognize it as hearing it outside of your own voices, so um, maybe I'm just missing something. Yeah, there's a there's a uh, uh, something out of uh, Europe that Tim Hughes really heads up that's called yeah. Worship Central. Okay, and yeah. So... Um, this that was on the 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 most recent Worship Central albums about maybe came out about a year ago. I think the album was called Set Apart, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. And th- there's a song called Make Away on there that's kind of um, I has come more to the U.S. But th- this one is Can't Stop Your Love has been re- really useful for the church there in uh, London. Yeah. And so, but it. It I knew recording it would feel like a brand would feel new to most people who haven't discovered the, what was happening over there, and so I just love it. I love the the feel of the song, the good mm. energy and good tempo, and um, and uh, it's something I wrote with uh, Ben Cantillon, who's one of the the leaders and worship leaders in London, and and another writer who's. Uh, really wonderful name uh, Nick Herbert. Yeah. And so I have to put a little shout out for uh, Ben Cantalon because I don't know if you know he's actually local uh, to us. Yeah. His dad, I can his tell dad, your voice. <laughs> yeah. His dad actually was our pastor and married uh my wife and I and Charlene who's listening on is very close friends with uh Ben and he's he's just yeah. been a part of this kind of Christian life assembly with his his church out here. So yeah. it's amazing to see him, you know, traveling around the world and 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 leading worship like yeah. he's doing. Uh, so so that's awesome. And then uh, just kind of moving through a few more songs. So make a way. We did talk about that, and that's the one. Is that the one you're saying was on the is on Worship Central album and has been really taking root? In- no, that's Can't Stop Your Love. Is the one that's on the Worship Central. Okay. Okay. Um, and then Make Away has come out on Desperation Band, um, yes. where I am here today in uh, Colorado Springs, and mm-hmm. um, we've had a great friendship and partnership with them over the years, and um, and so uh, that they've been able to carry that, and it's just it's one that's been really um, it's just meant so much to me pers- personally. Um, yeah times in my life where I've I've really needed to believe that that God God will make a way when when yeah. I just can't see it and I can't find it and so I, that the song has really been one that people have been able to sing um, yeah for I, sure it, it feels like a song to me that you don't have to you hardly have to teach like you could just bring yeah. it out and people would yeah. be singing it by the second line yeah it has that yeah. flow to it right yeah so Yes. Yeah. Very much. Okay, and then uh and I just want you, that's another one. This is kind of an E P so it's not actually eleven or twelve songs. There's about six or so on it, right? So I just want you, just tell us about that one then. That's looks like some uh oh Paul and and Stu and you. Yes. Wrote that. Yeah, that yeah. that's um that one is new to this E P and I uh I I was it was at church one morning and um I I think it was so I go to church where uh uh 
David and Leslie of All Sons and Daughters lead, and I, I think okay. it was Leslie that prayed. Somebody, somebody prayed, one of them, and they said uh, something so simple, but it was, um, we just want you. I just want you, God. And I, and I hadn't, I just put it down in my little notepad because it just felt so, um, heart, there's so much heart in that phrase for me. And I, I knew I wanted to sing it, and it's just uh, to, to it, it framed that wanting God. We talk about want and, and need in worship songs a lot, but just mm-hmm. uh, I, I just, I just want you. Just framed it in a in a way that added a little more. It just engaged my heart in in a different way, and I wanted to sing it. And so, and it was a fun one uh, to work out with with Stu and Paul. Lit, uh, tip the hat just a, a a little bit to the police on it, which was fun to do with with uh, <laughs> with those guys. Okay, well, just, those were the days, eh? Hey? The days of the police and uh, and all of that. That there's no no shame in that. That's great. Well, questions keep coming in, so one more song to just uh, talk about, and then we'll go to some questions. The the last one I've got is how can it be, which. The name that comes to my mind was Lauren Daigle. She yeah, she yeah. sang that one, and uh, but her name's actually not even uh, part of the, the writing team on it. So, how did that one come across her her world? Yeah, so um, we had we had actually written that song about a year before um, she sang it, and um, I had I had sung a little demo of it. And it just felt like it. Yeah, it was one of those songs that we didn't really have anyone to record it or carry it at the moment. But it it seemed like it it could get lost, but we needed to make sure we kept track of it. And I know that sounds kind of funny, but when yeah. you're always working on something new, um, sometimes songs that we've had, and this is something to remember as songwriters, is just not not to always be moving ahead you know and so th- this one um i had i had sort of sitting in a little just piano vocal form uh for a year and paul was starting to work on a new a new artist named lauren daigle her an ep for her and, and they re- recorded five songs and he, he just felt like maybe there was there was one more song to be had and i had mm-hmm. just sent him this um on a not even thinking about the project he was working on because we'd only ever heard it with a guy singing it. And so um, I I had sent it to him, not knowing he was in the studio with Lauren Daigle, and was like, hey, we really should make sure we don't just completely forget about this song. I, I, it feels like, you know, it feels strong to me. And so mm-hmm. he heard it and, and was, Lauren was over, and then he played it for her and had just... just to check it out, uh, had her sing because I sent them the the Pro Tools session that I had done. Had her sing it, and um, she she cried her way through singing it, and wow. um, and the next thing we know, it's like that's that's become the single, and then it it just yeah. kind of like it, it accomplished things none of us ever ever imagined, you know, and so. Yeah. It's it's yeah. been that one's been a real amazing one to see, um, to see, and she was such a good person to carry it, and uh, so it's uh, mm. that was really fun. So mm. that's yeah. really great. Yeah, I was just listening to. I just actually got sent the pre-release to Tomlin's uh, new Christmas album, so we're yeah. starting to chart that, and uh, I noticed that Lauren has a play things on that yeah. album. So yeah. uh, so it's really neat to see her uh, sort of, she's sort of bubbled to the surface, I guess you might say, yes. over the last year. And yeah. uh, so that's, that's really great. Okay, some question time now. And um, so get ready. These are going to be like random, no order, because I can't, you know, put it all in order. And I'm just going right. to give you, you know, 30 seconds, 30 to 60 seconds on each one. And we'll just okay. try to, you know, hear people. So, so Chad says, he says, love leading songs that don't have octave jumps. 
are we moving out of that season? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I would say um, we, all of us riders, we, we need to be fighting to be out of that season. I mean, I, I don't know that I want to see it as a season because it, there, there are, there, there are times in the song where that is, can really accomplish a lot. But um, when I, uh, great are your Lord, I, I would say one of the gifts that song is to the church is that it, it's not rangy. And, um, and I'm always, I know with songs like Make a Way, I'm often going, gosh, if we could have, if we could have made that less rangy, it would be even more useful to more people. And so, um, so when we were talking about Good Good Father, that song is so um, incredibly written because it's, if you study the range on it, I don't think it goes beyond five notes, the whole song. Hmm. So yeah. I'm being, I think we're all, we're all mindful of trying to keep the range of songs within a, it seems like we keep creeping up, you know, the mm-hmm. song, the song range is slowly creeping another note every year. And, uh, and it, it, uh, it's, we, we need to, we need to make sure that we're as much as we can, uh, yeah. trying to write songs that just anybody with one octave range and an acoustic guitar and a capo and the knowledge of four chords <laughs> can lead our song. <laughs> Okay, so um, so Amy says, when writing songs for a local church, do you try to capture the season your church is currently in or your own personal season? When writing for your church, I think capturing the season your church is in is, is definitely, um, yeah, it's really helpful. I mean, that, that's what you want to go for, and it's really helpful. A lot of times that can provide framework for songwriting, too, so, like understanding, uh, is the church in a season where they're looking for breakthrough, or is the church in a season where they're um, uh, they're just looking back and saying, "Wow, God's been good," or is the church, in, you know, and so, or mm-hmm. meeting with with the pastor and kind of going, "Oh, what's what's the what's the passages of scripture we're going to be unpacking in this next season? What is it that that you feel like God?" Um, has for us as a church and then writing songs that come from that place is it's great fodder for the songwriter and it really is great for the church to feel like we're all we're all like pressing into one thing yep for sure katie says is there a certain environment you create or routine you keep up that you'd recommend for us in writing songs for our congregations um, I think the thing is when writing songs for congregation, just picture your congregation. Um, when I'm writing songs for congr- congregational singing, I, I'm always picturing leading a group of people singing what I'm trying to write. And so um, space-wise, um, not, there's, no, there's really no rhyme or reason. I, I have a little writing room at home where I just have piano and a, an acoustic guitar and um, that's my space. I've got a, a window with a great view, and so I camp out in there. But um, I think the the biggest thing about thinking when you're writing for congregational wor- worship is just picture leading the song, um, and that's that can be really helpful. It's almost visualize your church in front of you, and what's it going to be like to teach this song, or is, is this something that they can grab onto? Mm-hmm. Good. Okay, Paul and Jason, uh, or no, Joshua says, uh, and this is to you and 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 Paul, but since it's just yeah. you here, he says, yeah. I currently write CCM, congregational worship and country and live, in, in or I live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I play uh, piano, guitar, and working with local mega churches to expand the reach of these worship songs outside of their doors. But somehow I genuinely feel like I'm not getting the saturation needed to be heard. I come to Nashville once or twice uh, and do co-writes, mostly country, but he's just not sure how to get involved in the national worship scene. So there's a good sort of, um, you know, perspective from someone who's like, I want to be a part of this worship 
world, industry, you know, songwriting scene, what could you say to someone like that? Um, well, I think the, the, the best place to, uh, to be, even, even if the goal is to be for you to have your songs reach broader, I think the best place to be is in the local church setting to be serving that well. And, um, uh, and so if you're in a local church setting, uh, you know, I would say, are they, are you singing your songs in your, in your local church? And, and if they're, if not, then that, that needs to be where you start. And if, if they're not working well there, then don't assume they should, they should go beyond that, you know? And, um, and if they are working well there, then, Getting them beyond that, I mean, there's practical things. I mean, in today's social media world and YouTube and stuff, posting like a live video from us for a song is a great, it's a lot easier to understand the, how a worship song works when people can see it and hear it in a, in a live setting. And so it's, it's, I would I would want to make sure I've captured it in some way in in that live setting with people singing and then and then um, and then it's just really like saying God your will your way you know uh, constantly um, saying God this is the desire of my heart but you you yeah. have to you you have to open up the doors and and just constantly surrendering uh, these things to the Lord and. Um, everybody's story is different, and there's there's no there's no handbook on yep. uh, on it. Yep, it takes us back to the where we started this whole conversation. You were talking about writing a song for your girlfriend, who's now your wife, and just yeah. really encouraging people that you got to write and start out. You know, for that very pure, I don't need to be heard. I just want to sing. You know, I just want to present something to to the Lord because He wants to hear that. Yes. And yes. and out of that place, and I think you've really uh, demonstrated it. And of course, you know, seeing your success and and the success of other people, you know, that you've kind of come around. It it seems like yeah, but I I want the success. <laughs> you know, or yeah. I want some. Yeah. Uh, I want to be heard outside of my, you know, my own little circle. And I understand that, but um, yeah, that's um, that's. I really admire you for for paving the way and 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 for being a person of kind of integrity and 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 I don't know, just your heart that comes through, because you don't present yourself like you know like a big shot. That's why I I feel like I'm no big shot, and I feel very relaxed just talking to you. You're like a brother, you know, that yeah, I'm talking yeah. to and just, uh, and appreciate that, that groundedness that you bring and just want to encourage other songwriters that it's got to start there and, um, and let the yeah. Lord, you know, bring you some opportunities. So, yeah. so this is kind of bringing us, uh, Jason, to the, to the end. I have one other thing that I wanted to show. This is a little bit, um, you know, back into the praise charts world. I was sharing about our song quest before. That's yeah. something that we have done. And another thing that I've been actually working on for the last two years is redesigning from the ground up the whole praise charts web world. So, so we're currently in this kind of beta phase. It's almost like a song that's in the studio. It's not quite yeah. out. And so I've got it on screen there, what it uh, is looking like. And a, a few pages I just wanted to show people even – um, uh, uh, some songs that uh, we have there. So it's it's all sort of responsive design, working from the you know the phone to the tablet and the desktop and all of that. And so I just want people to kind of be aware because I, I I hear often you get very comfortable in a familiar world and they don't like change. And so I don't think this change is going to be um, you know something that will freak people out. We're going to make sure that. You can find your music very well, and um, and, uh, and so I just kind of wanting to give people a little window into a, a new world that is coming, where you'll be able to navigate through 
music and artists and songs and all of that and be able to uh, bring that into your world of, of songwriting. So, and there you go, Jason. There's your song. Yeah, that's amazing. That we yeah. found that. So, uh, so, and one of the phrases I have kind of going on in my head after having done all the work on this, this site was that it's incredibly complex to make something that comes out incredibly simple. <laughs> and songs are like that as well, right? Right, Where, right. You know, you look at great that's are you right. Right. And I'm like, well, that's just a four, yeah. five, six, one. I could, anyone could do that. That's good. But that's uh, good. Yeah. there is the genius is in you know making it so that it's uh yeah it it seems simple but there's yes. so much behind it right so yeah that's exactly right that's really well yeah said. yeah so so anyways we're just uh people can't really go to the site yet i'm just kind of letting the word out getting people sort of familiar and ready you know that that new things are coming and and uh, and we're deeply invested into resourcing churches with music like this and supporting you, Jason, and your songs uh, have a tremendous impact in our Praise Charts world. And so I'm yeah, really grateful for you Wonderful. For, for that. And maybe if we could just close in prayer, if I could invite you to pray for, uh, for all of us who are listening in, who are aspiring songwriters, you know, and just praying that God would give us that, uh, that faithfulness that we would be faithful, you know, to our call and to the to the real needed reason of why we would want to write, like like how you've been sharing, just having that right heart. So, could I invite you to do that, and then we'll just kind of close Absolutely. up from there. Yeah. Okay, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, we uh, we just close this time uh, and with just uh, wanting to say to you that. Um, blows our minds and it's overwhelming that um, with all of creation galaxies and everything singing a song to you that um, you somehow like just so um, you want you want each of the songs represented on this conversation today and you want them and, and, and you love them and you love to hear them and, and they somehow bless you and, um, and so we just we join in that song and we, we ask that you would help us love you and it's, it's about um, it's not about other agendas that, that, that you're bringing you a song is um, such a gift for us so we we ask that you would give us songs that um, that bless you, songs that um, keep your church singing about you. We thank you that as we write songs to you, Lord, that the object of our songs is inexhaustible and unexaminable, and so uh, we never run out of things to say to you and ways to say it and mm-hmm. so we just pray for more inspiration for um we pray for a great season ahead of, of new songs for your church and, mm-hmm. and uh, more songs for you and uh, and Amen. that we would show our love for you in that way in jesus mm-hmm. name way. thank you jason Amen. yeah Thank you, and thank you. You've been a tremendous encouragement. Again, lots of food for thought, and we're, uh, we've been recording this whole thing, and we, as we record it, Charlene is writing out notes, so it would be kind of, we put it into uh, writing so people can go to the blog and reread through the, the highlights of tonight so, or this morning. So, so that Wonderful. will be available by the end of the day. And, and uh, yeah, just the Lord bless you today as you're out at, New life in Colorado there and leading worship Thanks. teaching. Same to you, Ryan. And, uh, just Thank go you. do more of the same. Okay? Thanks very much, Jason. Thanks, Ryan. Thank we'll talk soon. Okay. See ya. Bye.